Nanette Kelly, Jaje Abreen, uh, Wajaji Nikashi Abreen, Boitha Nikashi Abreen, Nahave, Nahe. Uh, my name is Nanette Kelly. I am Osage Nation uh, Eagle Clan. And um, hello, I hope everyone's good, hope everyone's well. Uh, let's see, interesting fact about me. Um, I um, keep a, a personal flock of ducks on, on my property for my, my personal enjoyment, um, eggs for breakfast, and um, just general um, ducky drama. And um, the, the oldest one is about 17, so they're very well cared for ducks. Yeah. Uh, the Bartow Project came, came to me. It, um, it wasn't um, something that I had, that I had sought out um, it was um, sort of kismet, something that just ended up in my lap literally one day. Um, I am currently a 2021 um, California Arts Council Administrators of Color Fellow, uh, one of 10. And uh, for my project based out of here at the Ink People Center for the Arts in Eureka, uh, I had decided that I was going to interview as many artists of color, indigenous artists, black artists, uh, Latinx artists, and um, do uh, these little mini art videos to provide um, like the K through 12 schools for their, uh, for their curriculum. There's a new standard in the state of California for ethnic studies um, curriculum mandates. And so that's what I had in mind. I had education in mind to um, do these little videos. And in, um, in that process, I decided I wanted Rick Bartow to be one of the artists, although he unfortunately has, is, has walked on, he's no longer with us, but um, I wanted that education in there as, as well. And um, uh, someone had suggested I go to Del Arte and talk to them about the, the Bartow project. They might have some resources to help me get this video together because I clearly would be unable to actually interview the artist. And um, and after a couple of conversations, a couple of meetings, they offered me um, this possession as, as one of four filmmakers to do the, the Bartow project. And I, I, after I got over my shock, I was I happily uh, accepted and um, was able to um, instead uh, make that more of the focus of of my of my fellowship um, as COVID had shut down a lot of the other things that I was attempting to do. So uh, just overall, it really um, um, and and just loving Bartow's work in general, um, I was I was beyond um, beyond myself to accept the project. Yeah. Well, um, the um, the film that, that I'm making, I, I have a I have a crew of, of two people, um, two two fabulous people. Um, Amy Uecki is uh, a multimedia artist here at Wiggly and Humboldt, and um, also an animator. And then I have uh, Brian G, who is an incredible um, editor and um, sound tech uh, engineer and um, the three of us are, are creating this film. It's um, um, Rick Bartow, uh, the man who made marks, uh, is is the title. And my thought uh, with um, with that title was in working with the We Are Cultural Department on um, some of the content of the film. It came out in a conversation that when somebody passes away, um, their name is not said for a few years, but the description of who they are and what they did is used to talk about that person. And so it's it's been a few years, it's been a few years, but I, I thought I would somehow try to honor that that concept uh, with with the title of, of the film, The Man Who Marks. And so um, the, the film it's, itself is um, primarily focuses on um, his art, and um, his music and those um, those marks and that energy that he put into his work, regardless of uh, whether it was art or music. Um, but in general, um, the music is um, is not something that is often uh, 
written about or spoke about, and I really wanted to highlight his musical career, which was which was also very significant. So um, there's animation. Um, there's a lot of imagery. Uh, there's a lot of good music, and um, and just basically in in the spirit of his of his art, um, it's uh, I, I would say it's it's pretty lighthearted and um, just really concentrates on on those marks that he made on on canvas music on life on people just um, his his energy and, and uh, animistic nature and in, in general yeah. so um so to me uh rick Barto is um one of those um art figures who really um, is able to blur the line between what art institutions consider um, traditional art and um, contemporary art. And um, uh, I would say what art institutions consider those those two things because um, most, uh, most Indigenous people have a little bit different way of looking at it. Um, so, um, the um, the work that he does, um, you know, a lot of it should be hanging with those those other mark those other current modern artists, and um, uh, not be segregated uh, necessarily in the Native American room or the Native American gallery, because he had so many influences that were um, outside his cultures, and in, in addition to reflecting on his cultures and some of the iconography, um, say with, um, with the Weop people and, um, and his, his home here. Um, he actually had uh, quite a bit of, um, other influences from, you know, um, European artists. So, so thank you for joining us. Thank you for your interest in the Barto project. And, um, you know, we're all enjoying ourselves. We hope you enjoy what we make. Uh, come back next week and meet another Barto filmmaker. <laughs>